on the following key uh, points. Well, uh, this, this is the following key points. What is CLIL? How it can be done? CLIL class components, advantages for children, main rules of effective use of CLIL, effecting teaching techniques and teaching techniques which should be avoided. Well, everybody knows that uh, during the uh, last two decades, our Ukraine is uh, doing a lot of research in, uh, and reforms in, in uh, teaching English language. And uh, you know that a very broad topic was uh, research, designed and developed by Ukrainian, new Ukrainian school as integrated lessons and the primary school because small children are very energetic. Yes, it's very hard for them to sit at the table for 45 minutes. So our uh, teaching process was shifted outside, yes? And the more uh, children are outside and conducting and listening and uh, learning their lessons in the schoolyard with integration, different subject and the topic, the more successful they are. Now we shall another, another approach. It is, it is integrated learning. Uh, sorry, can you please mute your microphones? Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, what is CLIL? CLIL stands for Content and Language Integrated Learning. It refers to teaching subjects such as science, history, geography to students through a foreign language. How it can be done? This can be done by the foreign language teacher using cross-curricular content or by the subject teacher using English as the language of instruction. Both methods result in simultaneous learning of content and a foreign language. This uh, approach uh, was um, founded by uh, two researchers. One of them, is the, of, of them is David Marshall, and it was started in 1994. And I would like you to read the citation that clearly refers to situations in which a subject or a part of a subject is taught in a foreign language and has the dual purpose of learning the subject while learning a foreign language. Uh, young learners are capable of easily picking up languages if this is done in natural environment where the focus is not on language structure or grammar, but on language used in different real life contexts to solve tasks related to a learning topic. A clear classroom can offer natural opportunities for students to build language knowledge at their own pace. And I would like you to get acquainted with one more citation of another founder. Uh, it is Manchester, which uh, made the, his research a little bit later, but now they join uh, their research activities. And in 2008, he wrote, CLIL doesn't only promote linguistic competence because of the different thinking horizons which result from working in another language, CLIL can also have an impact on conceptualization, literally how we think, being able to think about something in different languages can enrich our understanding of concept and help broaden our conceptual mapping resources. This allows better association of different concepts and helps the learner go towards a more sophisticated of learning in general. So uh, both these uh, researchers, um, they built their uh, methodology on four following components. So clear classes include the following component and this so-called four C's. So the clear class always contains uh, or com is compiled with the help of content, the development of knowledge, skills, and abilities of the subject area. Then you are going to pay attention to the communication, the use of foreign language in learning 
while learning how to use it. Cognition, the development of cognitive and mental abilities that form a general idea. And culture, presenting oneself as a part of culture, as well as awareness of the existence of alternative cultures, because now we have great possibilities to learn and to teach in teams with, uh, when we can have class or audience consists of different people, nationalities, cultures from different countries. Uh, so uh, I would like uh, to narrow our topic today and to, we are going to talk about clear method uh, teaching in primary school. Well, I would like you now to see, you can see this slide, advantages for children of these methods. And in the first, um, the first advantage is improving language and subject uh, knowledge. Well, so during the class, there, uh, our students, our children, they improve, yes, the knowledge, improve their English, particularly, yes, and if we are talking about math, yes, the same, they are learning all different kinds of math decisions, sums, pluses, and so on, different actions. They improve their cognitive knowledge, yes, they know what they are doing, they are making researches, well, they learn themselves, they develop intercultural communication and knowledge because they are going to be aware of of interaction between themselves and between different uh, cultures. Promoting active learning. Active learning is promoting by our, us, by teachers. Yes, we plan these lessons. We try to make it with different activities, well, which are interested for small children because small children can't sit a lot at the desk. Well, so, then we are developing learning, communication, and social strategies, yes, because learning is we can't do with, without communication and without social strategies, yes, and helping children become autonomous learners because they here they are going to learn themselves to research. They are you are putting them different kinds of tasks and they can do themselves and then present their small projects or themselves, their ideas, uh, their projects in, uh, in, in our class. So that, uh, that are the great advantages for children. Uh, now I would like you to give uh, some tips of um, preparing these uh, lessons with a clear approach. So first of all, you are going to have your rules. Well, to main rules of effective use of CLIL in primary schools. Because supporting students in CLIL, during CLIL lessons makes them feel secure and comfortable. First of all, the first rule of effective use is to introduce a foreign language gradually. You know that now you are in the class where you are not using your mother tongue or language one. And sometimes it's difficult uh, to understand, to communicate for small children. So you are going maybe to maybe make step back and give them some easy lexic, some easy topics them to motivate them and um, to feel themselves interested in, follow, in the following lessons and continue their, their learning. The second rule is recycle vocabulary regularly because you know that the words we can learn and then they are forget easily. So you are making small steps, step by step, while giving the vocabulary. And you are adapting materials for students' level. It is the same because not to overload them with unknown words. And you are going to make, uh, to some, uh, you have, usually routines at the beginning, during, and the end of their lesson. Well, so these routines make uh, you, this lesson uh, somehow, the, the, each lesson is has systematized, yes, it has own the beginning, 
the middle and the end of the lesson and your uh, children, your pupils know where the start, where the middle and where is the end. And with the help of these routines, they can be aware of new words. Yes, they can learn these words. And for example, uh, we can see that a helpful tool in this respect is to create a bilingual classroom with interactive posters containing all time expressions, for example, calendar day, day of the week, well, cardinal and ordinal numbers, that is for our math, for example, the most common adjectives, our amount count, names of school subjects, a set of classroom rules, and vocabulary connected with different topics. Well, because we know that empty walls are not very good for the classroom. So everything could be put in order to visualize our lesson and to help our children to be comfortable and secure during the lessons. Then, uh, so we have, we have, uh, I have told you about these routines. And for example, what are these routines? So for example, you can begin the lesson with a song, questions helping students to predict the topic, well, or class mascot welcoming students or describing the words. And at the end lesson to check learning outcomes, you can play a quiz or maybe it's their children who can, who have a, a higher level can retell the story or retell what, or, or make a, some project yet yeah, in order you to see the outcomes of your lesson and if your efforts uh, was a um, success. Uh, sorry. Now I'll give you some examples uh, how to start lesson. I think that everybody knows, but nevertheless, sometimes you need to revise the same to update your, your knowledge. So lesson is, uh, the starting is always very simple. Good morning, hello, everyone who is absent today. But for small children, these are new words. Yes, for us, it's a routine. But you see, so four uh, word combinations, four sentences, and they know them. Well, during the lesson, they know the following examples. You have here a lot of them. Well, during when you conduct lessons, get out your books, open your books at page, turn, well, say it again, and so on, so on. And it's a must that at the end of the lesson, or even in the middle of the lesson, you are going to praise the children. Well, they are going to be motivated. Small children, they like to be praised. You can give them sweets or cakes or anything you will, be, you will prepare for their lessons. So you can see here, good, fine, much better, well done. Yes, so the motivation plays a great role in this respect. Now uh, you have, you are going to do different kinds of activities. Well, during reading, writing and speaking activities, you can see how many different words, questions they can learn. Well, can you read this? Who can read the sentence? Go on, say after me. Well, and that is make uh, the atmosphere of understanding and pupils know one by one, by one by one, they know all these kind of uh, things. Then when playing games, well, you can uh, learn them the and understand the following questions. Who is your partner? Has everyone got a partner? Sit back to back. Don't show your partner. Well, change partners. Take your turn. You are next. So, uh, but um, they are very active. So you need to, to keep order. Well, and for keeping order, the same. They know these phrases. Quiet, please. Stop talking, playing. Don't do that, please. Well, and the end of the lesson, though there may be if, if, even if the lesson is very interesting, everybody likes to hear these kind of things. That's all for now. Let's stop now. And everybody knows where yes, we, we are free and we are going to do next, to be involved in next activities. Uh, if we are talking about using effective clear teaching techniques, what uh, should we keep in mind? So, um, if you want to avoid communication break, 
breakdown. Yes, we are speaking about the breakdown because before we, we were talking about the beginning, about different activities, but then uh, your children don't know a lot and sometimes there could be a gap, the silence. They know not don't know how to um, what to say, how to say that he or she doesn't know this. So um, I think that uh, these uh, uh, different word combinations in green will help them to not to be silent well and to explain what has happened, uh, what they need, what help do they need. So, for example, me, what page, yes, or what did you say? Or shall I help you? Or excuse me, I don't understand in English. How do we spell? And that's all. So, um, but this can be taught, you know, that uh, in during CLIL, we are not going to use our mother tongue language. Well, maybe it's the very beginning, a very short. So what can be a great help? It is, you can describe, paraphrase, and learn them how to do or do it to use wet kind age or mimic. So uh, what uh, should be avoided? So I would like to stop on these four particular statements. So first of all, avoid separating language from content because CLIL approach, it is learning English through subject and subject through language. So we can't separate, we are not going to learn only English or only the content. We now here, we are focusing on the content, on fluency. Yes, the grammar will come later. The accuracy of the text will come later. Remember not to focus on the grammar. Don't teach it explicitly and focus on the topic. The same, avoid translating your vocabulary. Use drawing, use some pictures, some mimics, any kind of resources, but avoid new, uh, translate new vocabulary. Maybe I have told a description or paraphrasing or something like that. Try to focus not only on the verbal medium, but also on visual aids, media and technology. That will be a great help for you in conducting these lessons. And one by one, uh, you will get a good result. So um, I would like uh, you to read two citations of two teachers. One is a mathematician and one is a text the teacher of literature. Mathematics is such a serious subject. One should not avoid any possibility of making it useful and at the same moment somewhat entertaining. And that's what you could do when combining English and math. Literature with clear approach will focus learners not to worry so much about making mistakes so that they are feeling free to express ideas and themselves. And that's what you could do when combining English with literature. So, uh, so it's like not a very long presentation. I don't want to make you boring. Well, because I know the practice is uh, the most thing we would like to do in future. And uh, really a theory of clear approach is very long, very complicated. And I try to avoid all this um, big material series you can find it on the internet in our group i'll uh, give you uh, different links uh, where you can go and learn more but uh, so the aim of my presentation was to give you the base the basics of uh, clear approach so thank you for attention and i think that if there are going some arise question i can answer or you can write in our group and we can uh, do it uh, during communication in our verbal group. So th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vilja. Yeah, and uh, now we have, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask Lila in her group. Uh, 
uh, in our group. Sorry, Lilia, we see your mm -hmm. screen. I, yeah, I see because I, I don't know. Um, yeah, sorry, because there are some. Uh -huh. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And so, and uh, uh, that was the very basic theory. We will provide you with uh, a couple of articles uh, that uh, will be you can use uh, if uh, you want to deepen your knowledge uh, about CLIL. And also, this presentation will be sent to you if uh, you want, for example, to share it with your colleagues. Uh, we'll have this opportunity. Okay? And uh, now I give floor to TESOL Ukraine president. Mm -hmm. Elena Ilyenka, she will uh, mm -hmm, welcome you mm -hmm, and to tell a couple of words uh, about uh, what we're going to do. Thank you, Marina. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry for not being with you at the very uh, beginning as uh, I have had some challenges uh, communicating, but uh, if communication uh, is interesting, uh, you will always uh, start it. Uh, so, uh, on behalf of TISO Ukraine, uh, I would like to greet all of you as participants of uh, this wonderful seminar teaching math uh, in English for uh, primary schools. Uh, and I believe after this uh, first basic uh, workshop, uh, you already have uh, the idea of what CLIL is. Mm. And uh, let me, as uh, the president of TESOL, uh, say some words about uh, our association. As I know, uh, some of you are members of TESOL Ukraine, and some of you are not. Uh, so just a couple of words uh, about what we are doing and what we are going to do with your help. Uh, we are 26 years now. Our association exists uh, for 26 years already in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, our main aim is uh, to organize teachers to do networking of uh, you enthusiastic uh, teachers all over Ukraine uh, to develop our skills, uh, our the ways we uh, teach English, uh, and uh, help you uh, to keep with the latest developments uh, in the field of uh, foreign language instruction. Uh, we. Uh, are, uh, do, uh, we are working uh, with the support of uh, uh, regional English language office of the U.S. Embassy of Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we are so much thankful for, uh, for them. Uh, and uh, they help us with uh, communication uh, with uh, presenters and um, uh, uh, presenters uh, from the United States and other countries. Uh, so uh, some of you uh, had an opportunity uh, to be <clears throat> to participate in the webinars given by uh, Wendy Finlayson and Sean Higgs. Uh, so you know a bit about our activities. Uh, we usually have uh, <clears throat> once a year. Uh, an all Ukrainian conference for uh, teachers uh, and now for instructors uh, who use uh, English as a media of, of instruction. Uh, and uh, a number of uh, varied seminars uh, on um, innovative topics. Uh, of teaching uh, foreign languages, uh, in, in particular English, uh, like uh, teaching English uh, um, uh, for uh, using English for distance learning, 
media literacy and uh, other wonderful topics. And today uh, we have started a new revolutionary line of uh, uh, teaching English. And uh, this is CLIL, uh, using combined, uh, integrated approach of uh, English and uh, content. And uh, this, uh, uh, you are the pioneers of this line. And uh, we start with the first subject. Uh, the first subject is math, and the first level is primary school. Uh, so uh, please uh, be prepared uh, to be challenged uh, and uh, to discover knowledge, to discover uh, new skills, to discover results, and we hope you will discover TESOL with us. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, Lena. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I am so delighted to see people. And uh, yeah, so I uh, can feel uh, this uh, energy coming from everyone. Okay, yeah. so that's probably all for today. Yeah? Once again, uh, uh, now or during this time uh, until we meet uh, and uh, we'll meet uh, with uh, uh, mathematicians, uh, yeah, will meet on Thursday here yeah? and uh, with uh, people of words, uh, with literary people, will meet on Friday here. Yeah? And Tanya Nowitzka will be able to develop her both uh, halves uh, of the brain, uh, yes, yeah? so, and uh, we'll do it with yeah. Tanya as well. So uh, a couple I... of uh, technical moments. Um, uh, I will start uh, putting uh, all materials uh, into my uh, Google Drive, uh, and uh, I will give you the access. Uh, I will sing, I will send to you the link uh, with the access uh, to my Google Drive. Uh, so please buy uh, our next session. Uh, uh, look through the materials. Uh, the mathematicians uh, will uh, get uh, the program for the first grade. Uh, also, you will get the materials from uh, the British school. Uh, and uh, there I will also put uh, a Ukrainian textbook. Uh, we will analyze all of them. We'll briefly go through the vocabulary and uh, will check your knowledge of uh, math vocabulary, or probably will start uh, building some knowledge uh, at this point. Uh, so with uh, the literature people, with, mm -hmm, uh, <laughs> yeah, with people who will be more well-versed uh, during their studies, uh, We'll uh, start uh, with, uh, we'll do a different uh, thing. We'll uh, learn more about uh, genres uh, and uh, we'll go through a different uh, angle. Like uh, we'll do, we'll go through a different way here. We'll do the genres, uh, then we'll look through the periods uh, of the English literature and we'll see how the genres developed. Uh, during all these periods. And then we'll go back uh, to each genre and to each period uh, and uh, we'll learn more about each of them. So by our meeting in Odessa, when you come uh, to this offline training, you'll be able to tell about different genres, different periods uh, and different literary works. So this is our plan. Please, if you have uh, any questions. I have a question, Marie. Come on. Uh, in one of the emails, it was like a, a schedule, but it was said um, Monday, Tuesday the 13th. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, so 
let's do, let's mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. where it's 13 <laughs> is it Saturday? Yeah, yeah 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 i i noticed it also and changed it uh, it will be so literature will be on uh, uh tuesday the 15th that's my mistake thank you yeah so but anyway i will be sending you the reminders uh, all the time so now you only have to remember that uh, mess yeah one part of your brain is on thursday and the other part of your brain is on friday <laughs> so I am really excited. Thank you for being with us uh, because uh, this is uh, really a new step uh, for all Ukrainian education. And I hope that uh, you will be this uh, just uh, first, uh, I don't know what is first, not a drop of water, but this first ray of sun that uh, will awaken. Uh, so this clear energy among the Ukrainians. Yeah, so, and uh, so we'll meet you very soon. Uh, please uh, look through your Google Drives, uh, through your disks. Uh, I'll put there everything tomorrow. So by the time of uh, our training, you could already have some basic idea of uh, what we're going to do. And Lilia will send you a presentation and will be happy to answer any of your questions in the group. Yeah. Lilichka, thank you. That was good, simple, yeah, and very useful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I try to do my simple things. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the rest will be in our group. Well, not to overload and not to make you boring. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hope, yeah, we fine. hope. Mm -hmm. We hope that will be a useful summer, but not a boring one. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, and to see you on Thursday and on Friday. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks thank a lot. Thank bye, you. bye bye. Thanks, Thanks a you. lot. Thanks a lot, really. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye goodbye. bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye, thank you very much. Bye, bye, bye.